searching every nook and cranny. It's one of those old sayings going back centuries that still has its original meaning today, even though few of us ever use either word, nook or cranny, outside the sentence. Nook refers to a small hidden place and cranny to a small hole or crack, which means the phrase refers to a thorough search that looks everywhere, including every nook and cranny. When Jehu delivered God's judgment on the house of Ahab, he searched every nook and cranny for his descendants and supporters to make sure none survived, so the word of the Lord, which the Lord spoke concerning the house of Ahab, would be completely fulfilled. 2 Kings 10, verse 10. Verse 11 says he left no survivor. And verse 17 says by the time he was done, none remained. While we might have flinched or even refused to carry out the command to kill the whole house of Ahab, Jehu did not. He was the right man for an extremely unpleasant job. He did what he was told to do and searched every nook and cranny of Israel to make sure no one in Ahab's house escaped. Today's Throwback Thursday edition of Morning Minutes in the Bible on An American Missionary reaches back to a November 1964 article illustrating the challenge of doing God's will, even when it's unpleasant or frightens us. From Plain Talk Magazine, The Moment of Truth by Robert F. Turner. From the Spanish bullring, where with cool nerve, the matador has long been regarded with national pride, comes the expression, moment of truth. El Toro and the man. The massive beast, nostrils aflare, goaded to hot fury, perhaps symbolic of all man's foe, is ready to drive a cruel horn into his vitals. In previous charges, the man has led the bull closer and closer with the cape, but always to pass. Now the beast must be brought to the ground. Skillfully, the sword must be placed so that the maddened rush of the bull drives the blade to its destiny. With this savage lunge, the beast dies or sweeps El Matador aside in a crushing mingle of blood and dust. The flashing caps, the splendid uniform, the wild cheers of the packed stadium, all glorious, but none kill the bull. Boast of billboards, expectations of the sports writers, all meaningless now. It is the awful moment of truth. The man is truly El Matador, the killer, or is swept to ignominious defeat. As I contemplate this spectacle, I realize how surely we all face our moment of truth. This generation has scarcely known hardship. Depression is meaningful only to grandparents, and the horrors of war are seen as foreign products by citizens of a powerful winning nation. How would we face a disastrous national crisis? We have posed as Christians. Baptized into Christ, we attend church, sing, pray, and partake. We say we love God and acknowledge that God must come first, but rarely is our dedication to this principle fully tested. What knowledge, what moral fiber have we developed by which to meet our spiritual moment of truth? When our practice is questioned, do we become angry? Is our defense the flimsy argument of tradition? El Toro cuts swiftly through such. Are we artful winners of our own straw arguments? One day we must face a genuine foe. Do we judge ourselves by ourselves? One day God will judge us in righteousness for eternity, and we will face an awesome, irrevocable, and final moment of truth. Well, thank God we're not called to such an awful task like Jehu's. But that makes our own failures even more shameful. Whether it's our own sin that stops us or unpleasant opposition to God's word, backing down in one moment of truth makes backing down in the next even easier until eventually we won't even get in the arena. But each victory, each moment we stand up and hold to God's word against ourselves and our own desires, as well as anyone pushing us to give in, makes the next victory easier and prepares us for the ultimate moment of truth when this life is over and we stand before the Lord. Are you ready for that moment of truth? If not, there's no nook or cranny where you can go to hide from God. Thank you for watching this Throwback Thursday edition of Morning Minutes in the Bible of An American Missionary. Until next time, this is James McClenney hoping you have a great day.